Lisa Schumacher, Integration and Group Facilitation Skills Specialist. Jared Franks, Integration and Group Facilitation Skills Specialist. Donna Ray Lawson, Preparation, Administration, and Guide Training Specialist. Bonnie Carter Cober, Pharmacology and Administration Specialist. Egal Joseph, Consultant and Lecturer on Guiding Ethical Standards. Casey Frieder, Program Director. Laura Shaw, Curriculum Coordinator, Trauma and Equity Specialist. Margot Lynn Gadert, Trauma, Ethics and Cultural Equity Specialist. Kriya Land, Racial Equity, Trauma and Integration Specialist. Sylvia Hemstra, Harm Reduction and Set and Setting Specialist. Irina Sikulska, Experiential Skills and Integration Specialist. Eddie Natai, Guest Speaker on Healing Intergenerational Trauma. Eli Jackson Bear, Lead Educator, Experiential and Group Facilitation Skills Specialist. Hi, welcome. My name is Eli Jackson Bear. I'm the founder of the Lila School of Awakening, a nonprofit educational organization whose purpose is for the world to wake up and be free one heart at a time. For the past seven years, we've been training therapists, teachers, and guides in facilitating the possibility of people waking up and living a life of happiness, truth, love, fulfillment, and freedom. The Lila School has been licensed by the state of Oregon to train psilocybin facilitators. This is mind-blowing. This is something I personally have been waiting for for 50 years. And so over the years of those 50 years of waiting, we've developed a program to support this new idea of the possibility of using sacred mushrooms. Our one-year, 200-hour training exceeds the state requirements and offers unique benefits as it's building on the work of the Lila School of the past seven years. Using sacred mushrooms for healing and transcendence has been my personal mission for 50 years. In our time together, a few of our dedicated staff that you just saw before I started speaking will present different aspects of what we have to offer. At the end, we'll have a live question and answer so please send your questions and we'll gather them up and answer them at the end of this program. But before we begin, let's take a few moments to just sit together, relax, let go, and be here together in a free and focused way. Let everything settle down into peace and stillness as we take a few breaths together. With each breath, it can be a releasing and a relaxing of any of the tensions of the day that you might still be carrying. Ah, it feels so good to just breathe it in and let it all out. And whatever you were involved in before this meeting, and whatever you maybe anticipate doing after this meeting, just let this past and this future drop away for a moment. With the next breath, past and future, oh, just drop away for a moment. We can let all of our thoughts and questions fall into silence. I feel so good to just let it all be for a moment. And we'll answer all of your questions in time. But for now, with no questions, to fully relax and let go. Hmm. Isn't this what we all want? 
to live our lives in peace and stillness and openness, to live our lives in clarity and presence, in the joyful service of love. Isn't that what we all want? That's why we're here. And it must be what attracted you here. But now it's possible, not just in these few moments where we sit quietly, but fully embodied in your life. And this has been the mission of our school, which has had great success around the world so far, but now will be taken to a new dimension with the sacred use of uh, mushrooms. And we have an incredible team from around the world that will support us in this journey together. Only a few will, we only have time for a few of them to speak to you today, but each one brings a unique facet to our work. Our trauma team of Kriya, Margo, and Laura are all working with indigenous communities with personal, cultural, intergenerational trauma. Kriya has been learning to speak Maori for her work as a psychotherapist in New Zealand. Margo works in an Apache school, and Laura works with the original people in her area of Canada. And they will teach you how to work with and intentionally solve the psychic wounds of our time, how to benefit and take this teaching back into your community and back to the people who need it. Also on our team, Dr. Bonnie Korber is a retired anesthesiologist who, trained, who has trained doctors and worked in the early use of ketamine during her practice in uh, Texas when she worked with major depression. She will teach us pharma, psychopharmacology and oversee our health requirements for participating in this program. Dr. Egal Joseph, one of the founders of the Lila School and a former chief psychologist of the Corcello Centers for Complementary Medicine and director of the New York City Psychologist and Training Program, is our ethics advisor. I don't have time to mention everyone that you saw in the beginning, but these are a few of our staff that will be assisting you in becoming a fully competent facilitator in the service of healing and possibly transcendence. And before I introduce our first speaker, Laura, one of our team of trauma specialists, I'd like to give you a little bit of the origin story of the Lila School of Awakening. When I was 18 years old, as a freshman in college, I went to Montgomery, Alabama during the civil rights protests in 1965. Well, Dr. Martin Luther King came from Selma to the church in our black neighborhood. What a moment, what a time for Dr. King to be coming. We packed into the church together, sweating, singing freedom songs, loving each other, feeling the presence as he came on the stage. It was so powerfully moving to see this great man speak to us. His words, his, huh, his words that day are still alive in my heart. They have been the ridge pole of my life. He said, if you can't fly, run. And if you can't run, walk. And if you can't walk, crawl. But by any means and all means, keep on moving towards freedom. Those words became the rich pull of my life and guided me here to where we are now. And as I gave myself more fully over the next years, I was pushed to the edge. By 1972, I was 25 years old, alone in a cabin in the Rocky Mountains, hunted by the state. I had guns and nowhere left to turn, and I didn't know what to do. There were no spiritual or meditation teachers in those days, and I had no guidance. After fasting for three days, I took LSD and had a profound death and awakening. <sighs> that is still here today, 50 years later. I woke up and realized the truth of myself. Formless, timeless, immortal consciousness, alive and free. I'd never heard of enlightenment, 
But I knew that if everyone could experience what I had, the world would come to peace. And that became my mission in life. And now, 50 years later, it is at last legal to pass it on with sacred mushrooms. And during those 50 years, between then and now, I tried everything. In the 70s, I led psychedelic circles in communes in New Mexico and in Applegate, Oregon, right out of town here. But I found that just giving people LSD didn't work. I didn't know anything yet about set and setting and the crucial, crucial function that set and setting play. In the 80s, I started leading groups at Esalen Institute in Big Sur, California, where in 1983, I met Dr. Stanislav Grof and assisted him in his holotropic breath work when we were both leading groups there. I then used his book, LSD Psychotherapy, with some of my clients in my therapy practice in San Francisco. In that same year, I met Sasha Suljan, the genius researcher who discovered the healing properties of MDMA and its effect on the limbic brain. While it was still unknown and legal, I used MDMA with my clients, suffering from PTSD, from sexual trauma, and returning Vietnam vets. And it was mind-blowing. People's traumas would melt into love and acceptance and peace really profound until it was made illegal. At that same time, I started working with my uncle Henry Tyler, the medicine pipe holder of the Northern Arapaho people. Uncle Henry was the head of the Native American church using peyote as their sacred medicine. Uncle taught me how to build and lead sacred sweat lodges. And our sacred ceremonies today in our school are grounded in his teachings. I also want to acknowledge other important teachers that led me to the creation of the Lila School of Awakening. In 1978, Kala Rinpoche came to our town of Bolinas, California, and we took our bodhisattva vows to serve the awakening of all beings. That night, he had a dream about me and asked me to be the head of his first Dharma Center in Marin County. In 1983, the oldest living Zen master at his Zen temple in Choshoji on the island of Kyushu, passed on his Zen teaching fan to me, empowering me to pass on the Zen transmission to you. In 1989, I was initiated into a trance dancing Sufi clan in the old slave quarters of the Palace of Marrakesh in Morocco. By now, I developed a new model of ego and essence, and was training therapists, developing the model as we went along. I ran the clinical hypnosis certification program at Esalen and at the Institute Dr. Schmida in Vienna, Austria. My first book, Healing the Heart of Suffering, was published and I was having success in helping people with their psychological suffering. But it wasn't enough. As people's lives changed for the better, they still were not waking up. And so in 1990, I set off to find my final teacher. I was 43 years old. My book has been published. I'm teaching around the world. But it wasn't enough. People were not going all the way. And I didn't know where I was heading off to, but I knew I had to find someone more awake than I was. And that's when I met my teacher, Papaji, exactly 18 years to the day that I started my search. And my search ended there. He transmitted freedom with no mushrooms, no dogma, no practice, no hierarchy, no ashram, no hesitation, no waiting, no separation, no us and them, simply the clarity of living silence alive as love. He didn't teach by saying anything, although his talks were brilliant and funny and profound and enlightening, awakening, but merely by his silent transmission of being was enough. When he asked me to pass it on to you, he heard I was training therapists. And he said, let both client and therapist wake up. 
And before sending me back to the West, we were on a walk together. I love walking with him, holding his hand. We were on a walk together and he said, a candle that lights other candles is one thing, but a candle that lights other candles that light other candles is something else. And that is why we are here, to be lit as a candle of love and have the capacity and skills to pass on the flame of freedom. Now that you've heard the origin story of our school, I'd like to turn this over to Lisa, one of the founders of the school and our senior trainer. Lisa will introduce us to the sacred mushrooms and the clinically tested benefits from its many uses. After Lisa, Jared will share with you how our school works, and then Laura and Casey will share about our ethics and what happens in our school over our year-long training. And then Lee, our managing director, will share dates and contact info with you. And at the end, we'll see a few examples of people who've been in the school and their spontaneous reports. These were reports that just happened during a retreat. All right, so now I'm going to turn this over to Lisa, and she will share with us about this sacred mushroom. Hello, my name is Lisa, and I'm a teacher, mentor, and one of the founders of the Layla School. In honoring the roots of this sacred psilocybin mushroom, we honor a medicine woman of the Mazatec people of Mexico who inhabit the Sierra Mazateca. Residing in Huejutla de Jimenez, in the state of Oaxaca, Mexico, Maria Sabina played a crucial role in delivering the true meaning and potential of psychedelic mushrooms to modern American culture. Now that the sacred medicine and psychedelic therapy has been researched and studied, it is entering the mainstream of society. Nova this past month came out with a new documentary demonstrating the healing powers of psilocybin. I would like to just share a few minutes of this powerful documentary called Can Psychedelics Heal, which shows the clinical results of using sacred mushrooms, including healing alcohol addiction with one session. Let's watch together. To me, peyote is a very intimate medicinal herb. Psychedelic assisted treatments allow us to reinvent ourselves. They're allowing the brain to see itself in the 1960s, psychedelic drugs were famous for their mind-bending recreational effects. But today, they might offer hope for treating devastating conditions from addiction to PTSD to depression. I was on antidepressants for about four years prior, and I haven't been on any since. <laughs> I haven't felt sadness. How is this possible? Scientists are searching for answers within the brain where psychedelics alter consciousness and can open the mind to positive change. It's like reprogramming the operating system of a computer. You're getting down to very basic code level changes. We observe a radical change in the way that brain regions talk to each other. It's not only that these states of consciousness are beautiful and inspiring. They seem to have therapeutic power. The psilocybin shifted my perception from negativity to positivity. The research is cutting edge, but early results from clinical trials offer hope. You don't forget the breakthrough moments that you had, and you don't forget what you learned. They stay a part of you. I haven't drank since my very first session. It worked almost like an antibiotic where I did this treatment and then I was done. It is with humility and respect for the ancient ways of the wisdom keepers that I share my story of the healing powers of psychedelic medicine. 30 years ago, when I was 28, I went with friends deep into the Sierra Nevada mountains along the Modoc River near Yosemite National Park and took LSD for the purpose of taking a trip and having fun. That trip changed my life. I experienced myself as pure aliveness, singing out loud as I overflowed with the bliss of existence. I saw the energies of our bodies, the trees, 
the rocks, the river, and the sky flowing in unity as one. I saw who I am with no boundaries. Back home in San Luis Obispo, a growing feeling of disconnection from my essence became intolerable, and the striving that had marked my life fruitless. I grew restless, and I began to seek for something real. I quit my job. I engaged in a series of failed relationships, and then I uprooted myself, moving 700 miles north into the wilderness of Southern Oregon, away from everyone and everything I knew in sunny California. Faced with only myself, I was immediately plunged into the unraveling of my egoic structure that the LSD had pierced through. With no guidance, I began to spiral into the heart of the suffering that is the hallmark of ignorance and self-hatred. When I took the LSD, I was given my first awakening. This led to the shattering of my ego and deep disillusionment, which ripened me to meet my beloved teacher and receive her transmission of pure love. It was in this shadow of ignorance that grace appeared in the form of Gangaji, who blew open my heart in an explosion of love and confirmed the inherent purity and goodness of my being when she said, be your natural self. I'm humbled and awed at the potency of the mushroom medicine. It offers the possibility for healing of personal and intergenerational trauma, the end of addiction, and the opportunity for everyone to find their way to freedom that is our birthright, opening the way to peace on earth one heart at a time. I look forward to meeting you heart to heart as we embark on this sacred journey together. Now, back to Eli. Thank you, Lisa. That was really important that everybody receives this information and the possibility. So now we're going to hear from Jared, who's going to share with you more about how our school works in form. Hi, everyone. My name is Jared Franks. I'm a Leela school teacher and mentor and director. And I live in a small town called Alstonville in the Northern Rivers in Northern New South Wales. And this is actually Bunjilung country. And I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land. And I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and to any other Aboriginal First Nations people who are attending today. I'm here really to give you the context of the Leela School, where we came from and what we've been doing. And it was about seven years ago when Eli really called together a group of devoted students uh, who were teachers in their own right to form this school, the Leela School of Awakening, to create a structure to hold actually the mission of the school, which was world peace and freedom through universal self-realization. And it really had these two arms to it. The first arm is really about skillful means. How to be a teacher, a trainer, a therapist, a guide, and how to work with people in your world, in your life skillfully. And in that, we actually use altered states. And we found that much of the suffering that human beings experience is coming out of the subconscious or the unconscious. And to deal with those issues in the conscious mind is generally ineffective. And so an altered state can allow you to access the deeper part of the human psyche where healing, transformation can happen. And so for seven years, we've been training people to induce an altered state and then to work with people in that altered state in a way that actually allows the client to have their own discoveries, to realize their own resources and to have access their own wisdom 
to discover the answers to their own questions. And it's very beautiful, very powerful work that is very successful. And we have hundreds of people around the world who have been through the course who are working successfully out in the world with their own practices and applying it to whatever they do. And so we are very, very experienced in not just uh, the, the, the advantages of altered state, but how to induce it, what are they for, why do they work, and how to work with someone in an altered state, all with the purpose of bringing healing, happiness, health, love, self-realization. And so beautiful skills that we have. And what I would say makes the school unique in a certain way is our attention to ego and the role that ego plays in our suffering. So using the skills, we can do ego strengthening. We can, we can heal wounds and, and discover confidence and actually strengthen the ego, which is essential to a certain point. And then we can look at ego transcendence. And so for that, I'd actually like to read from the Leela School's presuppositions, where we really clearly outline our view on ego. And so please uh, bear with me as I read a little bit. So everyone is living in a waking trance we call ego. We do not see the world as it is, but rather our projection of it. The trance is based on the belief that I know who I am, I know what I am, I know where I am. All belief is a trance state. This trance state involves the physical, emotional, and mental aspects of our brain, giving our experience a sense of reality. We believe that what we sense feel and think is real. We call this personal reality I, myself. It is clinically called the egoic sense of self, and it is marked by suffering. Trance is consensual. The personal trance that I am my name, my body, my thoughts, and my feelings is reinforced by the shared belief of those around us starting with our parents or earliest caregivers. The personal trance is nested inside the family trance, nested inside the community and the tribal trance, nested inside the global trance. Waking up from the personal trance leads to self-realization. A self-realized person is free of illusion and filled with a sense of fulfillment and can lead a happy, productive life without the constraints of self-doubt or a sense of unlovability and despair that mark the ego state of personal trance. Waking up from the personal trance leads to what has been the elusive goal of lasting happiness based on fulfillment rather than based on external circumstances. So as you can see, the Leela School works on both ego strengthening and ego transcendence where it's not about what the therapist wants for the client. It's about what the client wants for themselves and what they're ready for. And so this makes us unique in a certain way. And I'm so honored and grateful to be working with such beautiful people and such a depth of experience and a depth of, of skills that will be so useful and just suited just right for this new awakening into the use of sacred medicine for healing. So that's my presentation. I thank you all for being here. And I look forward to meeting you sometime. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. And now Laura is going to take that and expand it into how our program works, what our curriculum is like, and how our ethics are integrated into the very fiber of our organization. So 
Laura, please. Hi there, this is Laura here. And I'm speaking to you today from where I live in Golden, British Columbia, Canada. And this is the home, the unceded traditional lands of the Tunaha and the Sekwekmik peoples, and also home of the Métis Nation Columbia River Society. So I'm, I'm wearing my, my sash today, and this is really a, it was given to me, and it reflects my continued commitment to honoring and protecting Métis women and girls from violence. They've suffered so much intergenerational trauma and personal trauma. And it's, uh, it's a part of my work that I cherish. And so part of my role here in the psilocybin training program is that of equity and trauma specialist. And another role is I've been working with all of your amazing teachers that you'll have to develop the curriculum and the resources. And I thought today I would let you in on what your learning journey is actually going to feel like. So tell you a little bit about some of the methodologies we use and sort of what's, what's in our minds as we've been creating this program. But first I'd like to speak to the ethical integrity of the school and also how we go about teaching ethics. <laughs> so in, it's almost hard to put in words. In reflecting on this, when I think about the common current that flows through the entire Leela school that we all share and that we all hold each other deeply accountable to, it's self-inquiry. We really hold each other accountable to being aware, being vigilant to any unconscious movement, any unconscious behavior, or even unconscious bias that we may not even realize that we have. There's this ongoing deep commitment amongst all of us to be aware of any movement and to inquire and to support each other in that inquiry. And this is really where our ethical integrity starts from to ensure that we ourselves and anybody else that we're working with is really moving from somewhere that is truly serving in an open and humble and collaborative and intelligent way. So you'll see that and you'll feel that with everybody that you work with and you'll see it in our core abilities that we teach, which are really the values, the pillars of learning that are incorporated into every course, into every single class. And we'll invite you into this inquiry as well. You'll be held in this container where you have the support and you'll be developing the capacity to check within yourself to see if there's anything running that may not be the deepest level of, of service or of your capacity. So from there, we teach ethics. There's a strong ethics course in this program. And in that course, you'll learn everything you need to know from the Oregon Health Authority mandated code of ethics You'll need to, you'll know everything you need to know for practicing legally and safely and things like how do you set boundaries with your clients that are healthy? How can you become aware of transference and countertransference and other ethical traps and situations that can come up in a psychedelic context 
we have very experiential ways of allowing you to practice how you would respond to ethical complexities. And we, we have fun with this, although it's also very serious. It's very deep work. It's deeply important to the integrity of what you will be able to provide for your, your own clients down the road. So the other piece that I'd like to touch on is what you can expect in your learning journey. We know that people learn in many different ways and the way that we make sure that you're getting the knowledge and the skills and everything you need to be a solid facilitator the way we do that is we teach in rapport with you. So what makes one of the things that makes this program unique is you'll have a lot of time with your instructors. There's a lot of instructor student time. So there's many opportunities to explore things and, and we get to know you. We actually get to know you. We learn how you learn. And then we make sure that you are taking in resources that really work for you. So our resources, for example, range from podcasts to films to written articles and books to guest speakers who are wisdom keepers and precious to the program. You might be learning through music. You might be learning through some of the experiential exercises that we'll be giving you throughout Our assessment is also experiential and diverse. So we are really um, supportive of, of the idea that rather than just knowing something, you need to embody it. So that's why we have two in-person practicums where you'll have a lot of time to go through every piece of the process of setting up a journey from the prep and orientation all the way through to many different options of deep integration. And you'll have a chance to have feedback and a chance to demonstrate your, your skills and also your capacity to facilitate. And you'll get the mentoring and the support along the way. So I am so excited about this program. I'm very honored and happy to be part of the team. Can't wait to meet you. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, I'm so grateful for you. Laura has contributed so much to our program on so many levels, but integrating our whole curriculum into a coherent uh, symphony from all of our different instruments has been something that Laura has really excelled in, as well as bringing our ethics into the very DNA of our organization. And so now, Casey, our program director, is going to give us a deeper insight into the actual structure of this one-year program and how it will benefit you. Hello, everyone. My name is Casey Frieder, and I am serving as the program director for our psilocybin facilitation program. I live in Ashland, where I serve our community as a chiropractic physician, a father, and a youth soccer coach. I'm going to be walking you through the program so we can see together how it will play out. But before I do, I want to acknowledge that we will be offering the in-person portion of our training here in Southern Oregon on the lands of the Shasta, Tekelma, Modoc, and Cow Creek Umqua tribes. We honor the wisdom of the indigenous people, both locally and globally, who have led the way in using sacred plant medicines and without whom we wouldn't be meeting today. I feel blessed to be a part of this program as it weaves together the most essential threads of my own life and experience, psychedelics and self-realization from my first magic mushroom trips in adolescence 
to sitting in peyote circles with the Native American church when I was in college. These sacred plant medicines have played a major role in my spiritual awakening. I'm excited to join you in the sacred circle during this powerful time when we have the opportunity to share the healing blessings of psychedelic medicine with our global tribe. So now for an overview of the program. It's gonna be 12 months in length and 200 hours of training. Our program meets all of the requirements of the 160 hours mandated by the Oregon Health Authority and goes beyond offering insight into the workings of the subconscious drives of ego fixation, which interfere with your clarity of self-recognition and your ability to stay true to all that you realize during a psychedelic session. In my experience, this is really the key to eliminating unnecessary suffering in living a life of love and true service. You have to gain insight into how the ego works in the waking state so that you can truly integrate all of the powerful realizations that you experience with psychedelics. Our program is gonna be a hybrid format, a combination of in-person, online, and self-directed learning. For the online portion, we'll be meeting weekly for live Zoom classes with our instructors, and also on a regular basis in smaller peer support groups, sometimes led by a mentor, in other times with just your fellow students to deepen and support one another. For the self-directed portion, you'll have home assignments, including videos, audio recordings, and readings to enjoy. For the in-person, we'll have two seven-day retreats in Ashland, and we will have a cohort of 26 students. We will begin the program at the beginning of March 2023 and have two months of online learning before our first in-person retreat in mid-May. And while we are hoping that you'll be able to experience a psilocybin ceremony during the first in-person retreat, and while we as a school are licensed by the state to teach you, the legalities and the timeline pertaining to when and where psilocybin administration will be allowed is still unknown. If we are unable to use psilocybin during our first retreat, then we'll find other ways of deepening our experience together. After that, we'll go back online for four more months of learning and mentoring through the summer. And then we'll have our second in-person retreat in October. And we certainly anticipate that we will be able to use psilocybin during this one, if not earlier. After that, it's back online for another month or so of online mentoring and integration. Then we'll take a break for the holidays before coming back at the beginning of 2024 for nine more weeks of online learning, preparing you for taking the exam for state licensure. So that's an overview. And now I wanna talk about the core abilities you will create and develop through this program. So this is really, the qualities that you can expect to walk away with. The first is to embody the qualities of a true friend in rapport, the ability to respond to yourself and others with a quiet mind, an open heart, and not taking anything personally. You will learn to embrace vulnerability, increasing your capacity to meet and open to what is uncomfortable and unknown. You will learn to foster the well-being of both individuals and society. You will learn to facilitate sessions in a compassionate and heart-based manner. You will demonstrate social and cultural awareness with the ability to acknowledge and deal effectively with cultural and ethnic diversity issues, and also to work collaboratively with people from diverse backgrounds and cultures to inspire unconditional respect for human dignity and diversity. You will demonstrate the capacity to practice in a trauma-sensitive manner, and you will learn to commit to appropriate self-care, recognizing and attending to your own limits and therapeutic capacity. 
you will learn to think critically and creatively, assimilating a broad range of knowledge. And you'll learn to act responsibly within your scope of practice. You will demonstrate ethical integrity, treating all individuals justly, fairly, with empathy and grace. And last but not least, you will learn to work cooperatively, effectively giving and receiving feedback. So that's it. I hope that our offering is clear and that it resonates deeply with you. I look forward to meeting you face to face and heart to heart as we take this journey together. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. Okay, and then Lee is going to come up and tell us about contact information. After Lee, we're going to watch some exemplars. And then again, we're going to answer your questions on a live question and answer. So please do let us know any questions you may have. Send them in. We'll sort them out and answer them after the uh, last of these people speak to us. Okay. Hi, I'm Lee Estock, and I'm the office manager at the Leela School. If you call or email our office, I'm the person that she'll get. And I'm the best person to speak to regarding logistical questions, scheduling and financial questions. Our program will be a year long program, mostly made up of weekly online classes. And there are two seven day retreats in person throughout the year. At this moment in time, we are not quite ready to accept applications. We are waiting on final approval from the HECC, which is the Higher Education Committee in the state of Oregon. We are in process and don't expect it to take too much longer. Once the approval is confirmed, we can take applications, which will include a health questionnaire as well as a brief interview. Our schedule, which is subject to change, is in process. What I can tell you now is that we are planning our first full online class to be Saturday, March the 4th. The Thursday evening weekly classes will begin immediately the week after, and our first in-person retreat is tentatively planned for May 11th through the 17th in Ashland, Oregon. Please watch our website for updated information, and if you are on my waiting list, you'll be informed just as soon as we can take applications and as soon as the dates are firm. We will put up a screen in a moment that contains my email address as well as our school's mailing address so that you can contact us. Please feel free to take a screenshot of this or jot down information. If you are not already on my waiting list, please email me, lee, L-E-I-G-H, at leela.org, and I will add you so that you are made aware when we are ready to go. After today's meeting, a recording of this will be placed on our YouTube channel, our Leela Foundation YouTube channel, and we will plan another open house when we have more specific scheduling information to share. After we watch a few more short clips, we can answer any questions that you might have. Please use your chat box right now to type in questions to us, and we will get to as many as we can shortly. Thank you very much. Oh, that was so great, Lee. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm so grateful that you're here meeting everybody as the face of our school. Open, bright, friendly, caring. Okay, now let's look at some people speaking from the retreat about their, what they've realized or what they've gained or what they've, how it's affected them. We're going to start with someone who's completely new in the program in his first retreat. Then we're going to the second person who's been with us for about six months or so, uh, or maybe six months to a year. The third one is a compilation of Eddie. Eddie is our, one of, on our staff, and this beautiful, beautiful being you'll see. And we're going to see him through his stages with his first contact with us, and then a year later. And then we're going to end with someone who's actually one of the mentors in our school and one of her recent realizations. Okay? So we're going to watch that. After that, we'll answer your questions. Thank you so much. We'll be back in a minute. Um, I had last weekend the first experience with directly silence. And it was amazing. 
and today with the groups was very beautiful very beautiful people are always here in this space are very beautiful people i love it and it's a amazing experience of my true being um to realize that what i am what i am <laughs> you invited me to um the silence that was swallowing me <laughs> to to give my life to it to stay true to that instead of everything else and uh, everything came up i got i even got a little sick <laughs> i had to like lay on the floor everything was burning self-hatred I don't think I've ever hated myself so much. Maybe I always had, but it just all came up. And um, but I heard you say in my head, it comes to be burned up by love. And so I stayed and the silence pierced my heart. And then all of a sudden my attention was freed and the sky was blue and all the colors were vivid and i just and then my attention i was able to just fall in and feel this immense powerful presence that's always been there but i just was distracted and focusing on how i'm feeling <laughs> and when my feelings weren't the issue it's and I want freedom. It's that was the greatest gift you gave me was to decide I want freedom and more than anything. And when I did, it's here. <laughs> yes. Get out of hockey. Yeah. in the home, I can get the pipe pipe up. I would also like to acknowledge the sacred lineage. Mm -hmm. the, the dance of the illusion. And I fought with that sort of illusion. And I see you wielding that sort of truth. So I put mine down. I'm not picking yours up. I've been hiding behind that roar, hiding away, so I can't be seen. And I know now I have to stand in my truth. I felt it in its fullest expression. I felt my anger, I felt the hatred, I felt the sadness. I felt primal, raw. I felt the earth beneath my feet. And I roared like the lion. And I felt the thunder in my voice. And it, then it disappeared. And I felt a little bit as a newborn baby, which is just, ex just exploring life. And if I have really no clue about my past and what I could have, what I could do in the past and no thoughts about the future and really being here and just noticing how life is living in this moment. And there was happiness in lying in bed. <laughs> yes, and thoughts came by, uh, a special juicy one. Oh, if this, not, if this will never change and no need to grasp and just being with this wonder of this new fresh life in this moment having no ideas, no wantings, just being open and receiving life in, in this moment. Okay, so now it's time for your questions. And the, uh, 
I'm here, Lisa's here, Lee's here, and Casey's here to answer them. But I'm gonna start with one that I see that is about dose and dosage. Dose, dosage set and setting. This is so important and crucial. You have to have the right dose for the person and what they require in that moment. There's a whole varying degree of intensity and it, it is attuned to the needs of the, of the person in front of you. But even more importantly, the dose and dosage is set and setting. Setting is your environment. You want a supportive, clean, safe, sacred environment that is focused and pure. And your intention has to meet that. So your intention has to be focused, one-pointed, and very clear on what you want, what your current state is, and what you're willing for. Those are the criteria for a successful session. You know what you want, first of all, and you prepare yourself. In my experience, my most powerful session came after fasting for three days. And all during those three days, I was one pointed on my question. That's the key. One pointedness, full intention, and then the correct set that will support that. So that's set and setting. And then dosage really, if you've never had psychedelics before, you start off with a lower dose. And then you would have a second, stronger dose if that's what's required. Another important question someone asked here that I want to answer before we get to the others is, um, is it okay to do this if you have heart disease or any other medical benefits that would, any other medical symptoms that would say it wouldn't be appropriate? Absolutely, we do a very full screening for you. If anything is contraindicated in your health history, we will not, we will not go forward with it. And when you are trained, you will have the same health taken questionnaire so that when you know your client, you will know their history to know, is this appropriate for them? There's some things like lithium, for example, is contraindicated. If someone is taking lithium, they can't do psychedelics. There are other issues like that, that will, which was something that Bonnie will address as part of her psychopharmacology and we will address in our intake form. So those are the two that I saw. So. Okay, who else? Lee, Lisa, you want to take over some of these? No? Nobody else? Okay. Okay, so then people want to know about cost, of course. So right now, this cost isn't finalized, and we can't set a price until we are finally authorized to teach by the Higher Education Commission of Oregon, which is a late thing that came into our came in after we were certified as a psilocybin service provider. We now have to be certified also as a school, which is just a something in process. Until then, we can't set the price, but our price realistically will be around ten thousand dollars for a year, and we don't know yet officially, and we can't take any rec any. Uh, enrollments until we are officially a school and we've officially set a price and that'll be happening hopefully shortly if you have heart rhythm problems or any other diseases where it's not recommended can you take this no in the q a there was a question about um what do i have to have a degree um and also um, when clinics will be open in Oregon. Yeah, Casey. Yeah, I'm, I can speak to that one. So the only degree that's required by the state of Oregon is a high school diploma or the equivalent. And in and so far as when clinics will be open in Oregon is we don't know. You know, you know the state 
has their own process, their rulemaking process, which is being completed, and they're targeting January 1st to have that done. But then each city, each county, which has approved psilocybin services, has their own rulemaking process around that. So it's going to take some time. So come January 1st, when psilocybin services are, you know, quote unquote, legal in Oregon, it's going to be a period of many months as this rules out and things are finalized. But our best guess at the time is sometime um, by the middle, so, you know, maybe third third quarter and fourth quarter at the latest was, is when the actual service centers will be up and, and operating. Um, we, we're receiving qu several questions too about people outside of Oregon, um, non-Oregon residents, people outside of the country. Is there a benefit for them? Can they apply? How do you see that working? Can I, yeah, I can speak to that one as well. Um, so given that really we're on the cusp of this wave, you know, this is happening globally, it's happening here in the US, it's happening nationally. So Oregon was first as a state to approve, to legalize psilocybin services, but it was just approved on the ballot in Colorado. So Colorado is gonna be next. It, it looks like they're probably gonna follow a similar model, but actually even be expanded. So while we don't know definitively what, what their rules will be, oftentimes there's reciprocity between states when it comes to different professions. So if you get, you know, the, uh, the Oregon licensure, go through an Oregon approved program as other states expand, it's likely that you might be included in that as, as well. Um, and then in terms of how this will benefit you if maybe you live in a different country where it's it's not on the horizon that psilocybin is going to be legal you know really the essence of what we've been presenting and talking about today how this capacity to be a true friend and to serve your community in whatever the capacity whatever your job is that's real that's the essence that's the beauty of this and while psilocybin can can expand this possibility right it's it's still it's it's possible for you even without psilocybin and this is what the Leela school is all about and what we've been doing for seven years now even more far beyond that you know that's what eli has been doing throughout his life and so i can speak as a physician like these skills are something that i didn't learn in school that have been become the foundation really of my work the foundation i didn't learn in school how to deeply go into rapport with a client and really help them to discover, you know, their own resources. I never learned that. So whether you work as a healthcare professional, as a coach, as a teacher, you know, if you work in a restaurant, the capacity just to go into rapport with your clients is profound. So yeah, I think this can benefit you in that way, but it also might be that our two-year immersion program, we call the True Friends Immersion that we've been offering for years now, that could be a better fit. And if you live abroad, that's a program that can be complete, completed um, completely online, where you actually don't have to travel and be in person for that. So that could be a better fit. So yeah, so I think that we, we already have, um, you know, the capacity, the offerings, you know, to really meet you and support you in so many different ways. So great. Thank you, Casey. One of the things about doing the uh, out of country programs is that we're already running uh, the school in Australia and in Europe. So you can join in the, either of those places as well. And as Casey said, you will learn to be a true friend. You'll discover your own innate capacity to serve and you'll get these skillful means and insights into your own structure, your own character, your own true essence, and then of those who you meet, whoever they may be, clients or partners, you'll have the capacity to meet and deepen into yourself and into others. So anything else, Lee? I don't see your picture, but I hear you. <laughs> there is another uh, Q&A. Well, there's, there's more in the chat. I don't know if you guys can see, maybe there's other questions that would be good. We've kind of answered the the, the basic ones. Um, somebody is asking if there's a potential for ongoing support once the program is completed beyond the year. 
I imagine we we have something to say about that too. Yeah. Lisa, you want to talk about it? Do you know? Or... Oh, you're muted, Lisa. Go ahead, Casey. Let's hear from you. Let's hear the answer from you. I... Yeah. So regarding, you know, ongoing support. So I would say first, as this field develops, like this is a new well, it's not a new profession, right? It's it's existed for millennia, right? We have had shamans, we've had healers who's, who've led people in, in ceremony with, with sacred psychedelics. But as it's now it's above ground and legalized, it's a new profession. And like all regulated profession, there's continuing education that's required, you know? So you need to continue to to upkeep, you know, to continue to polish your skills, you know, to keep it fresh. Um, and it's likely that that is going to be required. We don't know all the specific details. Um, I see a question here about is the 10,000 cost a one-time cost or every year to maintain a license? So the 10,000 cost is for the program to get trained to become a licensed facilitator. And then I'm guessing there will be a a, a cost maybe every year, every two years to maintain your license, but that's going to be in the realm of a couple hundred dollars. That's generally what it would be um, for something like this. Well, that cost for maintaining your license is to the state. To the state. So I think it's, I think they're talking about a thousand a year. I'm not sure, but that's part of the, one of the proposals I heard recently, a thousand a year to renew your license with the state. We will have continuing education and we have a second year program for advanced skills that uh, include deepening your insight into character structure and, and your skill capacity for advanced ways of working with clients. So that's part of the Leela School that's already a possible resource that could be used here. That's right. I can speak to Aaron's and Victoria's questions about Aaron has asked, uh, why do we we feel the plant medicine has the potential to in, instigate spiritual awakening in individuals? And I can just speak from my own experience, as I mentioned earlier in the in the talk, that I didn't when I first took LSD, I didn't expect I didn't know what that there was spiritual awakening. I just I just was wanted to have fun. But can you imagine if you actually had the intent? the actual intention to deepen and and more subtly open to your own awakening, to, to your own self-knowledge of what actually is real and true for you, for, for, for you as in, to awaken. And I can say for myself in, in other times that I've had taken medicine that you know, it, it, it takes you, it takes you where your deepest, deepest intention lies. And the possibility of awakening for all of us is in the, the, the willingness to actually open to see what's real and what's not real, what's true and what is our egoic structure. And this medicine reveals that. It just first of all, just in your willingness to open to that and say, okay, I give I give myself to what is going to be shown here in the highest intention. So it I can't I can't like it also opens the brain. It's it's it gives you your brain more capacity to to examine itself and see itself. It's it's very powerful. And if you have the intention for awakening, you will be shown what is needed here. You will be shown, shown the possibility of that in your own life. So I don't know if that answers all the questions. There's another question from Anya about if I can't provide this in my country, can I also join the program? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, you can join the program, you can complete the program, but in terms of you can, you wouldn't be able to then take the test here in the state of Oregon because that's only for Oregon residents. However, you, you will be ready for whenever it is that 
your country, your state, you know, your city, wherever it is that you live, you know, when this wave comes comes to you, you'll you'll be ready. You'll already have those the skills and you will have be deepening in that. And that's what we need all around the world, not just here in Oregon. And on, oh, go ahead. No, please, please. Uh, Anya asked if if you have a personal coach. Well, we call this a guide. We've called it a mentor. Yes, you will have someone to work with you, to help you through the whole thing, to integrate whatever you discover, whatever you learn, and to to continue your own self discovery from your own resources that come from you, as Laura was saying, out of rapport, deep rapport and deep skills. So the answer is yes, you do have a, you will have a guide. You know, I see there's some other questions around, um, yeah, whether you'll be able, if you can attend the program, if you're not an Oregon residence resident and again i hope that's clear yes you're still welcome to join us there's a there's been a couple of questions regarding people that are in the school currently and they're asking if it's better if they are certified through us already as a hypnotherapist i mean i just see that kind of written a few different ways i don't know if i know we don't right <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I can can speak on this without saying too much that, you know, the, the state of Oregon is actually creating a, po a possibility, a possibility for some reciprocity. So a certain amount of training in another field, you know, similar that will actually qualify, you know, to meet some of their um, their, their um, sorry, my button, regulations to meet some of yeah, what's the requirements. Um, and so as a school, since we've, we're already established and we're, we already have this two year true friend immersion and, and we know that many of you who are in that program and who have attended that program are interested, um, we're, we're hoping to create a bridge program so that, yeah, so that we can, we can integrate the two, right? Because ultimately, again, both of these programs have the same roots, you know, and so, um, I would just say for now, um, just to kind of, to wait and see. Um, do you have anything more to say on that, Eli? I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for everybody being here. Yeah. I'm grateful that you showed up. You know, it's a mystery who gets called. I certainly wasn't expecting to get called. No, Lisa wasn't expecting to get called when she took us a fun trip or when I took my trip, you know, some mysterious heart call has brought us together, brought this team together and invites you. And so you'll see, it's a decision of a heart really, whether you're called or not. And then everything takes care of itself. So do we have anything else to say before we say call it off? I think this is probably a good time, right? finish so thank you for being here may all beings be happy and free heart to heart mm. thank you